goodness and mercy toward us. We offer praise. Come on and give him some praise. He's worthy of the praise.
application is swiftly approved. Amen.
the middle of the Who is on the Lord's side? This is, I think I have this message in my little group. I don't know. But if he is, you can buy it and read it in its entirety. Case I didn't uh, put it in there, but I, this is what I intended to put it in. It's not in there. And get a copy of it and uh, read it. Who is on the Lord's side? This is relative. I look at the world today in which we live, our culture, and we look like anything goes. I hear somebody, I think it was Bill Winston in the, in, in the AIM, said we don't mention hell no more. And it's the truth. Amen. Most folks don't, don't, don't mention hell in their sin. Uh, and consequently, a lot of folks don't think you're going to make it go to hell. And some of us feel that we can live any kind of way. But I'm a holiness preacher.
And if you try to do the right thing, people will label you traditional. Oh, in this church, see, he went on traditional things. Uh oh. But if you're willing to condone everything and every kind of lifestyle, and then they say you're a liberal. This is where our church has come to. I, I, I know, and, and I, I feel a burden I was getting ready to, I think I've been ready to preach this sermon once down and, and we had some of y'all in shouting. Made up 
up a Christian, Jew, Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, and some of everything. And uh, we're welcoming everything in. So we can't just say America is a Christian, but we can say so far we are free to worship the God of our choice. When Joshua was nearing the close of his life, he called all of Israel together and put them in remembrance of all that God had done for them. And sometimes we forget what God has done for us. And everything we have, God has given it to us. And it's unfortunate that some of these young people don't know from whence we'll come. And just a few years ago, we used to lay down at night and look up at the stars. Uh -oh. Look down at the chickens under the house. And the young people don't know a thing about it. But, but, but the Lord bless your mom and daddy. And you escape that. And so you don't know what God has done for us. And so Joshua reminded them that it was God that brought them out of slavery. It was God that brought them across the Red Sea. And all that God did, God had given them houses they didn't build, and vineyards they didn't plant. And so he challenged that whole crowd to make a choice. Joshua 24, 15 says, Choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Revelation 3, 15 and 17. God said to the church of the Laodiceans, I know thy works, that thou neither hot or cold. I would, 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 I would that thou were cold or hot. 16 says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I would spew you out of my mouth. So that tells us right there that we can't be spelled a fence. You're going to have one feet in, in, on the Lord's side and the other feet on the, I'm going to call it the devil's side. Uh, one, one feet in the world and one in the church. They used to say, goodbye world, I'm gone when you get saved. And leave the devil and all of his tools behind. So it's clear that God is calling us to a decision. We cannot have it both ways. God has always demanded that we should serve him and him only. I call it the supreme commandments. We say that thou should not have no other God before me. So today I want to remind you again and ask you this most important, important question. Whose side are you living on? No, you don't have to tell me. But you deal with your own self. You answer the question to yourself. And may God grant us grace to give an honest answer. And sometimes you need to talk to yourself. That woman had the issue of blood learned how to talk to herself. And you need to talk to yourself and examine yourself. And there are some questions you just can't avoid. You really have to give an answer or remain silent. And if you remain silent, it will be against you. Who is not for us is against us. So God uh, grant us to give ourselves an honest answer as we evaluate and discover really whose side are we living on. Now, before we enlarge upon this exceedingly personal, and it is personal, that's why I told you don't have to.
tell me. And practical question, whose side am I living on? I must ask you to remember the man who asked the question. It was Moses who put the question before the people. Who is on the Lord's side? He put it to Israel, the people he had led out of Egypt when sin was running rampant in the camp. It's well to remember that he stood there a long man. And let me tell you, people can backslide, uh, y'all call it missing the mark, so quickly. Moses had been called up on the mountaintop to meet God. And for 40 days, Moses stood there in the serenity with the majestic display of God's infallible glory. There he stood a long man, and remember he had been up there for 40 days and 40 nights. And in a 40 day time, the whole church backslid. Oh, I know this is a quiet word, backslid. And they didn't backslide out of the church. And this is the thing that we have to be careful about. But they backslid in the church. In other words, they didn't leave the church. It was a time when we focused backslid, they left the church and went on somewhere. And asked the Lord to help them and get back. But now we want to go to the nightclub at night and do whatever we want to do with the world and still be in the church. And the Bible did say let the wheat and tap grow together and in the day of harvest he would do the separating. Uh oh. And so you may wonder why, why the pastor put up with that stuff because he said let it grow together. God don't separate it. Uh, I told y'all about a, oh, well, I'm soon set up. I, I won't read you. It's in my book. Uh, uh, an old mother in the church used to sing, the Holy Ghost, you know, and she, she'd start singing and, and get in the spirit. She said, some of these old people in this church, you can't straighten them. I can't straighten them. It takes God to straighten them. God's going to straighten them when he comes. When he comes. When he comes. God's going to straighten them when he comes. I wish I could sing this. But, but, but she'd sing that song and then she'd go around and start picking out folks. <laughs> folks be sitting on the front seat and start moving to the right. Get them and bring them to the altar. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I don't know when he mothers anointed now. Uh, you you got to have an anointed. It got to be God showing up. It was God back then. Uh, but the devil in some of these folks right there, you got to rebuke them and ask the devil out of them. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Let me drink off that. And they were dancing and 
shouting. I, I say they were the first topless and nude dancer on record. For they were dancing with their clothes on. For the Bible said the people were naked. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. They were dancing around the golden calf and telling a lie while they dance. And these are the gods that brought us out of Egypt. And one thing, you may not be jealous, but God is a jealous God. He said, I should not have no other God before me. Dancing doesn't mean anything unless you have the victory. See, that's why you ought to dance when you come into church. We used to come to church and get happy. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. And they start dancing and dance on down the aisle. Because they had victory. And we let the devil cheat us of our victory. And then we don't want to claim our victory. We sing, I've been saved all day. Ain't I glad? And go to dancing, singing, I've been saved all day. Because you got the victory. Yeah. 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 And when they came across from Egypt and got across, the Red Sea, they had a right to dance because they had victory. How many of you got victory? Well, look at somebody and say, I got victory. Victory. No, you ain't, you don't have it. You just say it. Because if you know you got victory, without a shadow of a doubt, you know you got victory. You, you will see it with some in you. This crowd was dancing and then telling a lie. They were saying that this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. What a lie. You see, when you backslide, you start telling lies. Because you got the lie to cover up for yourself. Try to make up for what you don't have. And I used to, when we used to have testimony meetings, you know, we used to have testimony. That's the unfortunate we had to cut it out. Uh -oh. We had so many folks with the wrong testimony. <laughs> and, and go, I, 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 move on. We, I went to the World's Conference, Pentec uh, Pentecostal Conference over in Indonesia, I think it was. And uh, anybody that had a prophecy, you had to go before a committee. And the committee had to hear your prophecy before you get out and prophesy. You, you see the thousand people folks jump up and prophesy. They won't just jump in up. So they didn't know what you were going to prophesy. They didn't want you to prophesy the wrong stuff. <laughs> we used to testify. And, and we got to test the line. Fighting in our testimony. Y'all hear me? And, and, and I could almost tell when folks start lying because they get the fussing in the testimony. Y'all don't hear me? And, and so we had to kind of cut the testimony out. <laughs> but Moses came down a champion. And I want to tell you right now, this is a problem with the church today. We don't need leaders in this day and time who are weak, need, and spineless. Uh -oh. For we must be able to defend the cause for which we represent. Unless you can stand and stem the tide. Uh -oh. And keep people from going back into apostasy. And drifting back into the darkness of sin, into the bankruptcy of their character. Then we have forfeited our position as leaders. I know we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but we sure got to inspect the fruit and tell people what's right and wrong. That's why Moses stood there, solemnly champion of Jehovah. 
and challenge the whole nation to decide for God who is on the Lord's side. Yes, I see you dancing. But everybody dancing is not on God's side. Jesus talked about two men went to pray. Everybody praying is not on the Lord's side. These two men went into the temple to pray. One of them felt that he was more qualified to pray than the other man. He was sophisticated and conceited in his heart. He felt that he was better than the other man. He thought that he was better prepared to pray than the other fellow. And that's what disqualified this man. He said, Lord, I fast twice a week. And that was all right. I don't steal and I don't lie. I pay my tithes. And all that was well and good. But when he started comparing himself to other folk, he got in trouble with God. Because nobody knows what's in anybody's heart but God. Uh oh. Man look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. We look at people who look deep. And everybody looking deep is not deep. And so this whole crowd had backslide. The assistant pastor Aaron, the church mom, uh oh, that whole bunch of backslide, dancing around a golden calf. Let me tell you, people will do more for wrong than they'll do for right. And some of the older folks remember Jim Jones. I don't know, I know the young folks may don't remember him. I mean, you may have heard of him. And people gave their homes. They sold their houses and gave all their money. Some of them gave their life to a rotten, stinking lie. They were addicted to the lie. They wouldn't believe the truth. Just like some folk do today. They won't church, support your own church. I know there's some curve here. If you send your tithes to the TV preacher. Somebody you never seen, and, and still give that one little dollar at home, and you be nowhere in the world you can call that TV man. And when you get sick, they'll pray for you. That didn't just start yesterday; it started back in Moses' time. Because they did more for Aaron than they did for Moses. They took their golden earrings off, their bracelets and their necklaces, and all the gold and turned it into Aaron, their assistant pastor, who made the golden calf for them. Uh oh. And when Moses came down from the mountain, Moses got indignant. And let me tell you something. Any leader that's worth his weight would get angry sometimes. Uh -oh. Can't like everything you do, especially if you're not doing right. And Jesus got angry. I don't think he was happy. When he went into the temple and they were selling Selling dogs, selling anything they could do so they could make a sacrifice. And Jesus went in, he turned over the table. And I, I don't think he was in that green, but he was angry. He turned the tables over and run them out the temple, said. If a leader is afraid to get indignant and, and swallow everything and lack everything people do, he's in the wrong 
wrong position. There are some things God doesn't take from us when we get saved. Uh, I know we're born again. See, some of us think holiness is what a holiness is not. Holiness is not a denomination. I told you it was a lifestyle. Holiness doesn't deprive yourself of the things that you must have. Holiness doesn't take your sex drive from you. That's why we used to have a lot of babies. I don't know what y'all do now. I'm glad I'm glad to work better. I believe he's sanctified. Sin nature yeah. uh, rolled up in 
but the Holy Ghost was there and gave me power. And it's not much to anybody that swallow everything that everyone does and lack everything that everybody is doing. I would have to tell you the truth. I don't like everything that everybody is doing. And I don't have to like everything to be saved. Uh -oh. There's some things God himself don't like. And he named seven of them. First one he said was a lying tongue. And I'm going to tell you something, even a lie don't like a lie. I've never seen a liar yet that wants you to tell him a lie. Determine what's worship and what's not. 
because everybody's making noise today. We used to say we belong to the noisy crew. But I don't know about that today. Look how quiet y'all are. We can't get response from a message unless we're telling you about the blessing plan. All right, sir. That's right. But when you tell you something that's going to help you live for God and make your way to heaven, we get quiet. Moses was equal to the emergency. We need leaders today that are equal to the time in which we live. We live in a day of issues that we must meet. We can't just sit around and have a good time dancing and shouting and bypass the issues that our young people are facing today. Promiscuity, promiscuous sex, premarital sex, extramarital sex, pornography, abortion, same-sex marriage, uh -oh. and anything like it, if I missed it. All these problems our young folk are facing. And we have got to say something. We can't afford to, to keep silent. Oh, I know that part get in the I think this is one of the greatest sermons I ever preached. Come on, boy. <laughs> For we have got to let them know what side we are standing on. They must make a decision as to whose side they must stand on. And we are the example. They, they, they may not say anything, but they learn more watching you than you can tell them. Uh-oh. The world is saying that it's all right. It's an okay situation out there. It's all right to shack up. Now that, that living together without marriage. If you don't know. As long as you are in love, everything is all right. No, you can't do that. Society say you need to live together before marriage. I was in Hampton Institute when I was working on my bachelor's there. And this was the philosophy that they were teaching. So you live together before marriage to see if you compatible. And the professor told us that that people, the rich folk, that would sponsor the couple, that is take care of all of the expense, and let them live together uh, to see if they were compatible. <laughs> they need to know that there are other alternatives lifestyle. All of these philosophies, and all of them, come to our mainstream of our society. No more, no longer are they in the closet. Are y'all uncomfortable? We ain't shouting, baby. But this is going to help. Because this is in the mainstream of our society. If you look at the people that are running for office, you, you got just about some of everything. And, 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 and they, they came openly and said it. But you got a, a, two, two men that's married together. And he's running to be your president. You're a Democratic president. How many of you Democrats in here? Let me see. You don't have to read Y'all don't have to read I'm going to leave y'all with a long time. But it's the truth. I don't know. And they told me, I was listening to the news as I came along here. They said he had raised more money. Than, than, than any of them girls after they had the debate. So I don't know, he may make it. And what you gonna call his husband? The first husband? <laughs> 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 let me y'all know. But 
somewhere, we, we, we've got to set an example. And we've got to face the issues. And our, our young people have got to mingle with them. So they have got to be able to go back with answers. Answers that are radically and dogmatically and absolutely true. And they must come from our poor people. It must come from our convocation. It must come from our convention. It must come from our organization. Yeah, we, we try to bypass the issues. And the young people are confused. Come on, Bishop. And want to know what must happen. Y'all don't hear me. Moses was brave came down and knocked uh, down the idols, took a hammer and an axe and broke all the idols up into pieces and burned them in the fire and then sprayed them on the water and turned around and made the people drink it. That, that's what the church used to do, but we don't do it no more. We used to have you drink it. You just couldn't come back in the church after you backslide out of the church. It used to make you come back and you had to stand up before the folk. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. I mean, we don't do that no more. Before you could go dancing and shower, you had to get up before the folk and ask them to forgive you. But I'm sorry for my sin. And y'all forgave me. But now we go out and we glad to see them come back. And they just go to dance. <laughs> I don't make y'all get up no more. <laughs> y'all looking at me. God the other truth. <laughs> I don't think many pastor make you get up. You know what I want to see. <laughs>
when saints get together. And if we begin fasting and praying. And uh, I understand Brother Town said she wasn't waiting to the 40 hour. But she, she was having the women now. Uh, and get together and start praying. I hope some of y'all join uh, because something happened when these women pray. See, y'all didn't know you got power with God. Peter was in jail. Oh, I know some folks think that's a fairy tale, but I believe Peter was in jail. I believe he was in bonds and stuff. And I believe they threw the key away. But a prayer meeting went on in John Mark's mama's house. And called the sinks together. And they women went and they went to pray. Yeah. And they prayed until something happened. Prayed until God sent an angel in the jail cell. And turned the thing around. And he'll do it for you today. He'll turn things around. I believe I pointed out uh, many of the fallacies in our life today. You got to answer that question. Whose side am I living on? Am I living on the Lord's side? Then you got to answer the question. I didn't come to answer the question. I want to raise the question with you. And you're going to have to answer the question. When you answer the question, be honest with yourself. Who's on the Lord's side? The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all on the ground. Stay and sing and sing.